Hey guys, this is Mrs. Nelson. Um, this is going to be the 8.3 lecture. I know we didn't get through this, and Mr. Um, Mr. Macklin is going to provide, I believe, the rest of the lectures. They'll be a lot more of a professional setting, but I need to do something to make sure you guys are up on point with this, especially because as I went through it, it's pretty difficult material, so I just want to make sure you're good with it. Unfortunately, I, I'm just struggling with technology right now from my house because I really don't have that great of a computer, and it's trying to handle a lot of things going on between this and academic challenge all moving online. So we're going to do our very best with this. I'm going to try to make this short and sweet, and hopefully it makes sense. And then we're going to also have our... Um, we're going to have our Zoom sessions coming up on Monday and Wednesday. So hopefully you guys are, are going to feel more confident after all that. And, and we're going to work through this and get you guys through it. Okay, so when we talk about complex numbers, the easiest way to kind of think about it is you have your real part and your imaginary part. And think of your real part kind of like the X, your imaginary part like the Y. Okay, so if we're going to graph these, point one. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I have a good picture while I'm still drawing. So point one, we're going to do three, and then three plus two i. So we would go over three, and then up two, just like we did on the regular. So that would be represented by a. Okay, then uh, negative four, negative five, we would go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that would be b. Then uh, C, negative 3i, so that means the x portion is 0, and we would go down 3, and we would be there. So there's C. Uh, part D, negative 1 and 3i, so we would go negative 1 plus 3, so that would be D. And then E, we just have a real part of positive 2, so we would be right here. That would be E. So there's that for you. Then we're going to turn the page. Obviously, that part was plain and simple. The next problems get a little trickier, but as I said, we're going to work through this. Sorry if it's a little jostly. I know my hands are going to get tired here as we go. I'm going to try to see if I can rest this. There we go. That's a little better. Um, so we're going to find the absolute value. So that's just like the Pythagorean theorem. You can see up here the absolute value of a plus bi equals a squared plus b squared. And you can see that. So for these problems, we're literally just going to do them like the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to do 3 squared plus 4 squared. So you're just kind of ignoring that i part and uh, treating like x and y. And you'll see in a little bit, there's actually a pretty neat way we're going to represent them in terms of trigonometry as well. So this would obviously equal 9 plus 16 or square root 25, which then equals 5. Then for part B, so if there's no number with the I, it would just be 1. So this would be equal to, the absolute value of that would be equal to um, negative 2 squared plus negative 1 squared. So we would get square root of 5. And then finally this, so if you just have the 1 part, just think in terms of 0 squared plus 4 fifths squared. Okay, and what's four-fifths squared, square root? Well, it's just four-fifths. All right, so um, moving into this, we're going to have a new way of kind of representing these. So we have, um, I don't, that's right, we didn't talk about this. Sorry, in my academic challenge class, we're going through similar stuff, so I wanted to make sure we didn't already talk about this. So you're going to see where the real part, A, is represented by R cosine theta, and the imaginary part, b, is going to be represented by r sine theta. So if you look at the triangle in the corner, let me shift my hand so I can kind of point, here would be your point, a plus bi. So it goes a distance, b distance. Here's your radius, which would be found by Pythagorean theorem. So it makes sense then that if this is your cosine, okay, so your cosine, op, remember, adjacent over hypotenuse. So if you multiply that hypotenuse over, you get r cosine theta, same for r sine theta. So very important representation for, this is called the trigonometric, tri trigonometric notation for complex numbers. And we're going to use it, and it will actually simplify some of these upcoming problems. So we're going to go ahead 
and find the trigonometric notation for each of the following complex numbers. So there's two things really we're looking for. We're looking for our radius, and then we're looking for our angle, and then we can write it in that notation. So for the radius r, we're just going to, once again, do that distance. So we have 1 squared plus 1 squared, and this is going to give us square root of 2. To find the angle, we're going to use tangent. Because tangent, remember, is equal to sine over cosine. So if we have cosine and sine, this is just going to be 1 over 1. And where is tangent equal to 1? And notice the positive and positive, so we're in the first quadrant. Where is tangent equal to 1? It's where sine and cosine are equal. So that means that tangent of, or I should say, theta equals the tangent inverse of pi over 4. So we have our radius, we have our angle, and then the trigonometric representation would just look like r, so square root of 2, times cosine of pi over 4, plus i times sine of pi over 4. All right, for the next one, sorry, if you get I have a dog that's trying to break into the room while I teach. So the next part, <laughs> gotta love, I, I'm sure some of the teachers have some crazy videos out there at this point. So we're going to go ahead and do this one. Again, we're going to find that radius. So we're going to do radius equals the square root of square root 3 squared plus 1 squared. It's truly negative 1, but it's going to go positive. So this square just gives us 3, this gives us 1, so we get square root of 4 or 2. For our angle, once again, we're going to do tangent of theta equals, you're going to do your y over your x, so to say, or your sine over cosine, because that's what it's going to be. So we have negative 1 over root 3. So thinking back to that trig circle, don't worry about the quadrant you're in yet. We're going to be falling. So if our x is positive, our y is negative, that puts us, remember all scholars take calculus, so that's going to put us, your x is positive, y is negative in that fourth quadrant. So we know we're going to fall in the fourth quadrant. We'll just write that down. But we're just going to figure out that ratio. So where is the ratio 1 over root 3? So just think about if you were to start, whenever you see the root 3, remember it's going to be an increment of pi over 6 and pi over 3. So if you looked here, your cosine value is root 3 over 2. Your sine value is 1 half. So if we were to do 1 half over root 3 over 2, and we multiply by the reciprocal, again, as I said, I'm going kind of fast on this lecture. Um, so if you are confused on anything, please get up with me and I'll explain further. But I don't want to keep these YouTube videos too long. So uh, that gives us our 1 over root 3. So we know it's there. But what is that value in the fourth quadrant? It would be 11 pi over 6. So it would be pi over 6 here. But since we're in that fourth quadrant, it's 11 pi over 6. So back to our, and we'll just write theta equals 11 pi over 6. And then we're going to draw our representation. So we get 2 for the radius times cosine of 11 pi over 6 Gentle. plus i sine of 11 pi over 6. And we're done. Now these guys are going to be a bit easier than the other. We just need to figure out what is our A and what is our B. So A, we can just kind of set it up. A is equal to R cosine theta, right? So A just equals 2 times cosine of 2, or 120. Likewise, B will equal 2 times sine of 120. So don't worry about that I sitting in there. Just worry about solving out your problem because you're going to put the I back in in the end when you draw your, your um, standard notation. So we have 2 cosine of 120. So what is this? This is 2 times cosine of 120. Remember, that's going to be over here. Okay, so 30 over from 90 and... Our cosine is going to be smaller, so this is going to be our negative one-half because we're in that second quadrant. 
Okay, so this just equals negative 1. And then here, this would be root 3 over 2. So it would be 2 times root 3 over 2, or just root 3. So when we write the new representation, we get negative 1 plus root 3i. So then we move over to here on this problem, and we're going to have um, cosine 7 pi over 4. So, so once again, we're just going to set it up and say a equals root 8 cosine of 7 pi over 4. Solve it out. 7 pi over 4, remember, is falling in that fourth quadrant. They're both negative, both negative root 2 over 2. So this is going to be root 8 times negative root 2 whoops, over 2. So what does that become? This would be like root 16. I'm just going to do the math on this first one just so you see it. So this would be um, negative root 16 over 2. So what is that? It's really just 4 over 2 or negative 2. And we look at this, and for b, we have the exact same value. So it's going to be b equals root 8 sine of 7 pi over 4. And we know that sine of 7 pi over 4 is the same value because we're in that fourth. Oh, I'm sorry, I said this backwards. This should have been a positive. That was a positive. I was like, wait, that doesn't work. So this is positive, and then this will be your negative because we're in that fourth quadrant. So cosine is positive, sine is negative. So this will be negative 2. And when we write the representation, that was the first one, so when we write the representation of this one, it is going to be 2 minus 2i. Okay? So moving on. So we have these interesting identities. Don't worry too much about the sum and difference identities, guys. It might show up in your homework, but again, everything's moving to online. We're going to get through this. I'm going to show you kind of how to do these easy, but a few of them we're just going to plug right in the calculator. If it wants definite answers on the homework and quizzes, we'll work through that. But um, this formula is really important. If you're multiplying two of these complex numbers written in trigonometric representation, you see the formula there, and we're going to use that, and you're going to see that it kind of simplifies the problems out, at least from what they would actually be. So... Looking at these problems, we're going to use our formula, and we're going to do, see we have R1, R2, so we're going to start off with 3 times 4, and then we have cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2, so theta 1 is 40, theta 2 is 20, so this is going to be cosine of 40 plus 20, and then we have plus I sine of theta 1, theta 2, so 40 plus 20. Okay, so when you think about it, really not that bad because this is 3 times 4, so we have 12. Then this is just going to be cosine of 60 plus I sine of 60. Okay, don't overthink it. I actually did. I started trying to do the sum identities on this when I was doing the practice notes. I have a lot on my mind, obviously, as we all do right now. So I started to do the problem. It was really overly complicated, and then I realized I did not need to go that route. So this becomes 12 times what's cosine of 60. That is 1 half, and then plus i times root 3 over 2. When we multiply this through, we end up with 6 plus 6 root 3i. We're done. So then we move down to this one. Okay, so same process. Hopefully I have enough room here. If not, I'll move. I have some blank sheets of paper. This will be 2 times 3, and then times is going to be same process. So cosine of pi plus, but it's a negative pi over 2, right? Okay, and then plus i sine times pi plus negative pi over 2. Lots of brackets. <laughs> The third bracket. Okay, we got it. So we're going to do the math on that. This gives us a 6 times cosine of pi over 2 plus i sine of pi over 2. So cosine of pi over 2 is going to give us um, 0. So this becomes 6 times 0 
plus i times sine of pi over 2 is 1. So what does this become? This now Remember, sometimes the real part or the imaginary part will fall away and you don't need it anymore. So when that real part falls away, your answer would just look like 6i. And you're done. So then moving on, we're going to do one more multiplication. So sometimes you're going to get something that's not quite as pretty like this. Now this is the one where technically if it asks for a definite solution, you would have to use those sum and difference identities. I'm not going to require you to do that. If it asks you for that definite solution, then let me know and I'll work some homework problems for you because it's just a lot of busy work and at this point I really just want to see you guys succeed. So. I'm just going to show you how to set this up. So again, this would be root 2 times 2, so the two radiuses, and then we're going to do times cosine of 45 plus 330, and then plus I sine of 45 plus 330. So that comes out to be 2 root 2 times cosine of 45 plus 330, so that's going to give us, sorry, I did this math somewhere else, uh, this is going to give us cosine of 375, and then plus I sine of 375. So truly, 375 is a coterminal angle with 15 degrees. So we could use that difference identity and find the exact value in square roots, but I'm not going to make you do that. Just for now, it's going to be sufficient to plug it in the calculator. And like I said, if it's required in the homework, let me know and we'll work with it. I have not looked at the homework yet on this section. I've looked at it, but I haven't actually put the answers in to see if it's going to require that. So this would be 0 0.073i if we round to two decimals. Okay, then we have the process of division. So kind of similar, and you look at that and you're like, oh my, but really all you're doing is just dividing the two radiuses and then doing the same process before. It's just those two angles are negative in there instead of positive. So this would be equal to the two radiuses, so 2 divided by 4. That part kind of doesn't change. And then we're going to set it up the same. So this is going to be cosine of the first angle, 3 pi over 4, minus the second, pi over 2, okay, and then plus sine of the first, sorry, there's an i there too, minus pi over 2. Oops, that's not 4. What did I do? That should be a 2. It's like something's not right here. And then we just solve it out, so this would be 1 half times cosine of 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2 just gives us pi, right? So cosine of pi plus i sine of pi. And this brings us to 1 half times what's the cosine of pi. This is negative 1. i sine of pi is plus i times 0. And we come out with a big old negative 1 half for that particular problem. I have two sets of notes here, so bear with me. Moving on. We're getting there. we got four more slides. So one more. Convert to trig notation first and divide. So for lack of time, I think we already talked about converting these over, so I'm just going to write the converted form. And again, if you're lost on that, please, please let me know, and we will... I can work some more problems for you, either in a Zoom session, or we could go, whatever you want to do, we could try Skype. There's, there's a lot of platforms that we can try to use, whatever you're comfortable with at this point. Um, but this is the representation. You would find your radius and your angle, just like we did before. And then we have root 2 times cosine of 7 pi over 4 plus i sine. 7 pi over 4. So there's our trigonometric representation. We're going to go ahead and set it up in the division problem now. So this is going to be root 2 over 2, or root 2 over root 2. And then we're going to times that by the cosine of pi over 4 minus 7 pi over 4. And 
and then plus i sine of pi over 4 minus 7 pi over 4. When we do that math, this becomes a 1 out here. This becomes the cosine of negative 6 pi over 4 or negative 3 pi over 2 plus i sine of negative 3 pi over 2. Okay, so negative 3 pi over 2, remember you're going the other way around the circle. So if here's the circle, we start here, we're going all the way around, so we're truly at pi over 2. So cosine of pi over 2 is just 0, and then plus i times sine of pi over 2, which is 1. So this just equals i. So you see a lot of these just kind of come out very basic. So then we're going to go down here. Final thing we're working with is uh, roots. So th this one here isn't too complicated. We're just literally going to, and thankfully the representation's already written for us as well, which is helpful. But we're just going to plug it in that formula. So see this formula, um, when you take something to the nth power and it's in that trigonometric representation, we're just going to plug it in and it's not that bad. It's just r to the n times cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. So for the first one, we're just going to do r to the n. So our r is root 2 to the 9th, and then we're going to multiply by cosine of 9 times 45 plus i sine of 9 times 45. And that whole thing, um, we're going to do that out. So we end up with, this is 16 root 2, once we multiply that all out, and then this will be a cosine of 405 plus I sine of 405. And we end up with 16 root 2 times root 2 over 2, because 405 is coterminal with pi over 4, and then plus I uh, times root 2 over 2. And when we multiply this through, that root 2, it's kind of funny, that root 2 times root 2, that gives us 2 divided by 2, so that all cancels, and we end up with just 16 plus 16i. And moving over to this one here, we're going to again do that radius to the 10th. So we have 2 to the 10th power. I'm just going to set this one up for time's sake because I, I don't know how much space this is going to let me record, so I want to make sure I get this lecture done. So... Um, this will be that, and then we have cosine of 10 times 330 plus I sine of 10 times 330. And you would solve that out. I think you get the picture, and like I said, if you need me to work more problems, let me know. And I'm going to move to this last one because this one's a little trickier if we're doing the roots. So that K... It's in the formula. You see that k times 360 over n. That, what we have to do is find different roots. So there's going to actually be two separate square roots of this, and we got to figure out both. So if there, we were doing a cubic root, we'd have to find three roots. Now it's kind of confusing, but we're talking about imaginary numbers here. So first of all, we would need to find our trigonometric representation. And again, due to lack of time, I will write it out. And that trigonometric representation is going to look like um, 4 times cosine pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3. And then we're going to see how that's plugged in the formula. So the first thing we need is r to the 1 over n. So we're talking about the square root. So this is going to be our first square root. So we'll, we'll say, so notice k is going to go up to n minus 1. So we only have to worry about k equals 0 and then k equals 1 in this case. So we're going to plug in the formula. We have 4 to the 1 half times cosine of pi over 3 over um, 2. 2 is our n. And then we have plus... 0 times 360 over 2. And then it's going to be sine of the same thing. So, sorry, my arm's getting tired here. So sine of pi over 3 over 2 plus, and we can already see that's going to be a 0. And there's an i here too. Okay, so this is going to become 2 times 
cosine of pi over 6, that'll be a 0, so this will be plus i sine pi over 6, and when we simplify it out, we get 2 times um, root 3 over 2 plus i times 1 half, or in other words, root 3 plus i. Sorry, I know this is shaking really, really bad. I'm going to hold it steady for just a second so you can see that. We're going to plug that one in now. So it's going to be the same thing. We're going to do 4 to the 1 half times cosine of, we already know this is going to be pi over 6. So we're just going to put pi over 6 plus 1 times 360 over 2, and then plus i sine of pi over 6 plus 1 times 360 over 2. Simplifies down to be 2 times cosine of, so 360 over 2, I should have probably converted that over into radians, that's like 2 pi, so that would just be pi. So what we're really getting is cosine of pi over 6 plus pi plus i sine of pi over 6 plus pi. So it's going to give us 7 pi over 6. So we get 2 times cosine 7 pi over 6 plus um, i sine 7 pi over 6. It's falling in the third quadrant. So we get 2 times or pi over 6. That's going to give us root 3, but we're in that third quadrant, so we're going to get negative root 3 over 2, and then another negative root 3, or negative 1 half i. So we're going to go ahead and multiply that 2 through, and we end up with negative th root 3 minus i. So there's one solution, and here's our other. Hold it steady for a second. Final problem. This one's a little tricky, but it's kind of fun too. So we're going to talk about the cube roots of 1. So real quick, in representation, r is just 1, and what is theta? Well, if the y portion is 0, x portion is 1, then that means theta has to be um, 0, right? Because our cosine is 1, our sine is 0. So there's our representation. We're going to plug this in. So we get 1 to the 1 third power. Well, wait, let me, let me write out the representation first. So it's 1 times cosine of 0, oops, 0, plus i sine of 0. So um, we can see kind of what's going on here, but I just wanted you to see that. Now we're going to plug it into the formula. So we have 1 to the 1 over 3 times cosine of 0 over 3 plus, so we're going to, we have to do a k equals 0, a k equals 1, and a k equals 2 for this. So a k for every step up until we hit 3. So we're going to 0, 1, and 2. So for 0, we're going to have 0 times 360 over 3. Oops, we'll do it like this. Uh, my parentheses are getting all messed up now. Okay, so we have that plus i times sine of the same, 0 over 3, plus 0 times 360 over 3. And we're going to end up with 1 times, so this is going to be cosine of 0 plus 0. So cosine of 0, same thing here. So we have plus i sine of 0. And this is going to be the one we're most familiar with, right? So cosine of 0 is 1, so this is just 1 times 1 or 1. Then we have k equals 1. So this is the one that's a little bit different. So for k equals 1, we're going to do the 1 to the 1 third again times cosine of, once again, 0 over 3 plus 1 times 360 over 3. And then plus i sine of 0 over 3 plus 360 over 3. Oh, and yeah, that's still 1, sorry. 
and then this becomes 1 times cosine of, the 0 goes away, 360 over 3 gives us cosine of 120, and then plus I sine of 120. So cosine of 120, this is going to give us negative 1 half, and sine of 120 gives us plus root 3 over 2 I. So there's our another representation. Remember that factorization of the cubic root of, well, we won't even go there. But um, if you want to see why this works, let me know. And there's some neat proofs about it and things that go deeper. But we're talking imaginary numbers here, so we're finding real and imaginary roots. So for k equals 2, the final one, we have 1 times cosine of 0 over 3 again times 2 times 360 over 3, and then plus I sine of 0 over 3 times, or plus, oops, it's a plus there too, plus 2 times 360 over 3, and then we get, let's kind of write it here because we're going to run out of room. Hopefully you can still see. So this is going to be cosine of 240 plus I sine of 240, which equals, remember, 240 is going to fall down in that third quadrant, and we are going to end up with negative one-half, I think, right? Yes, negative one-half, I had to think about the trig circle in my head for a second, minus root 3 over 2i. And you see that third representation there. So one answer, two answers, and three answers. All right, guys, I hope that helps. I know that was a lot, and I know my hand was really shaky with it. Just let me know if you have any issues, and I look forward to seeing you at our Zoom meetings this week, and hopefully I can answer any questions you may have. Have a great night or day whenever you watch this, and we'll see you soon.